Welcome to Church Online today as we gather again in this way. My name is Lynn. I have the privilege of being the Minister at Adelaide West and sharing with you today. Today we celebrate Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit in a different way. And so we light the candle just as we do each week here and at home and we reflect on the flame as a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And it's also a symbol of us worshipping together. Our hearts continue to break for the nation and the people of India as they continue to struggle with COVID. So much heartache, so many deaths, so much grieving. Let's give as we are able to, to help our brothers and sisters at this time in their time of need. There are many worthy organisations reaching out. We have just two suggestions today. Uniting World is an agency of the Uniting Church. Simply Google Uniting World India and that will take you to their donate page. And Bright Futures is a local Christian organisation known to some of us here at Adelaide West. They partner with Bangalore City Mission who are providing emergency response to the pandemic by distributing food organising vaccinations and using their school bus to transport people to vaccine centres. The leader of the mission, Jonathan, describes India as gasping for breath. You can donate to Bright Futures by going to brightfutures.com.au. This week is National Volunteer Week. It's estimated that in Australia, volunteers give over 600 million hours to help others. And today we recognise the many volunteers volunteering in our communities and our schools, in our churches and those volunteering here at Adelaide West and even on Church Online. Thank you to each of you for the vital role that you play in the life of our communities, in the life of our church and in the life of our nation. Australia is known as the Great Southland of the Holy Spirit. Jeff Bullock wrote a song about this. He revised it a couple of years later after hearing from Indigenous friends. And then Auntie Reverend Denise Champion has written a new first verse. This is your nation, this is your land, this sacred land, this is our home. Let's sing this as a prayer and as a declaration together to this great south land, his spirits come. Thank you. 
reading from John chapter 15, verses 26 and 27. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me, and you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. From John 16, verse 4b to 15. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. None of you asks me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the Prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me, because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. And from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. I tell you now about God and in wonderful thing them we do. God let the world so take Jesus. Déjame contarte acerca de Dios y las maravillas de Dios. Dios amó tanto al mundo que nos envió a su Hijo Jesús. Nosotros estuvimos juntos con Jesús. Lo vimos hacer milagros, darnos señales y maravillas. Lo vimos morir y volver a vivir. Jesús tomó los pecados del mundo y así nos dio el perdón por la gracia de Dios. Por el poder del Espíritu Santo. Ahora entendemos esas maravillas, las maravillas hechas por un Dios de amor. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Our y your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, 
blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love the story of Pentecost. It's a story of joy and drama, known as the birth of the church. I love the imagery of the tongues, the flames of fire, the sense of surprise, the speaking in other languages, the languages that were recognised by those that had travelled to Jerusalem from all over. It's a delight to be able to use the video from Adelaide West, from people of Adelaide West, declaring the wonders of God in their own heart languages from last year. It's too good not to share again. I've watched it quite a few times and it, it blesses me every time. The Uniting Church Assembly put up a video yesterday of the Pentecost reading in 21 languages entitled The Coming of the Holy Spirit, Our Cultural Identity, and I commend it to you. It's beautiful to hear and watch. We've put the link on the Facebook page and group and also on the YouTube page for this service. I love the surprise. Nobody could see this coming. Jesus had told the disciples not to leave Jerusalem but to wait together for the gift promised by God. So the disciples and followers of Jesus were gathered together in the one place, possibly a large upper room found only near the temple. Perhaps a disorganised rabble of believers, wondering what was going to happen. And surprise, the Spirit came on them with wind and fire. You know, wind and fire were accepted symbolism for the Spirit of God. In Ezekiel, we have the wind reviving the bones. The coming of the Spirit was both audible, the wind, and visible, the fire, visual and verbal. Wind and fire are wild, untamable forces. This was a significant event. You know, many times later in Acts, the Spirit moves softly and secretly, quietly, transforming lives and situations without noise or fuss. But this, this is noise and fuss. Clearly God was manifesting uniquely at a vital moment in history. And it's a complete surprise. I can't imagine them expecting this is what God would do. Pentecost happened. In the context of a Jewish festival, it was one of three festivals that Jewish men were expected to travel to Jerusalem for. And as the Jews were spread far and wide, they weren't always able to be present for each festival, but Jerusalem would have been crowded because they came to the ones that they could. Pentecost was the 50th day after the Sabbath of the Passover. It was an agricultural festival celebrating the first of the wheat harvest, and it's also part of the Exodus story. The broad context is that the people gathered to celebrate the goodness of God. Thank you for the harvest. God is still with us. We could think of Pentecost, the birth of the church, as the third great festival for Christians, alongside Christmas, the birth of Jesus, and Easter, the death and resurrection of Jesus. But unlike the other two festivals, Pentecost remains untainted by contemporary secular practices. There's no feasting, there's no giving of presents, there's no commercialisation, no four-day weekend enticing people to head for the hills or to the beaches. So we can simply enjoy Pentecost for what it is. The sound attracts a crowd and they gathered together. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, and I would add surprise, because each one heard their own language being spoken. You know, the disciples began to speak in these other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. This is not tongues or glossolalia that Paul writes about. It is coherent, known languages, no interpreter needed. And the Jews from different places and countries could understand it in their own language. What, what did they hear? Not 
common conversation, they each hear the wonders of God, the great deeds of God in their own languages, and they aren't fearful. They're amazed and astonished. It's fascinating to see how far away some of these places are. You know, thousands of Jews lived in Rome. That's 2,400 kilometres northeast. That's almost here in Adelaide to Perth. Elam was 1,200 kilometres to the west. That's from Adelaide to Canberra. Or Pontus was 1,000 kilometres north, Adelaide to Cooper Pedy. Cyrene was about 900 kilometres west, and plus there's Egypt and Arabia and Mesopotamia. These are staggering distances given the lack of cars and planes, and it's a rather multicultural crowd, a beautiful multicultural start to the church. All the languages remind us of another story in the Bible in the Old Testament, the Tower of Babel, where people were scattered and language was confused. We often hear it as a story of judgment. But it's also a gift of, dis of diversity because that was the result, the rich diversity of experience and traditions of all the different languages and cultures. You know, left up to us, we tend to congregate with people like us People who share the same interest, celebrate the same traditions, perhaps follow the same footy team, have the same educational background, or like the same worship style. But if we think of the Tower of Babel as an act of grace, God's intentions for humanity include diversity, despite our best efforts to stick with those most like us. Here at Pentecost, the actions of God affirms God's resolve to promote diversity of language and experience. The Spirit of God does not belong to one language group, social class, gender or age group. We have two parts of the story in the readings today. Acts is what happens, what happened. John explains what it means. Although John is written before Acts, but they complement each other showing different streams of tradition and thought in the early church. In John, this is a good part of a goodbye speech of Jesus, giving us a picture of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit's work. The Spirit is an advocate, translated as paraclete, someone who is a mediator, a comforter, a counsellor, one who instructed, assisted, and entered pleas on behalf of someone else, providing the comfort of sound advice and direction. The Spirit of God is God's power at work, continuing and increasing the understanding of believers. So we find an ever-deepening understanding of Jesus, leading us to a deeper appreciation and relationship with Jesus Christ. The John Everything happens in relationship. I will send the advocate to you. The spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. And he will make known to us that which Jesus has given him. John's words foretell the coming of the truth-telling spirit. There is a sense here of I'm with you. I'm for you. You will be guided in truth. The spirit will give you the words. You know, Pentecost is the surprise coming of the truth-telling spirit, leading us into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. The truth-telling spirit manifesting as fire, tongues of fire separated over individuals. We have unity and diversity. The same Holy Spirit is resting on us, perhaps not as visibly, but resting on us nevertheless. What's just as important as Pentecost is what happened after. Later in Acts 2, the early Christians started sharing everything they had and there were no needy persons among them. There was a unity, a sharing together, a radical community of selfless love, inspired and led by the Holy Spirit. This too must have been a surprise to the people around them. Perhaps a surprise to the believers themselves. Do we continue to be surprised by the Spirit in our lives, in the world? Is there surprise in the church today? 
Is our community around us surprised by our presence, surprised by the things that we do, surprised by our love for each other and others and our love and care for the world? Is the church the evidence that a better world is possible? May we become the church and community that we dream of. Inspired by the story of Pentecost, may we be unified together. Services, worship styles, nationalities, ages and languages. May we be unified with other Christians, other denominations, not judging, without pride, not thinking that we have at all together. The believers were surprised by the Spirit. The people were surprised to hear the disciples speaking in their languages. The world was surprised. A church was born amidst surprise. Let's rekindle the surprise. Step out under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Imagine people being surprised by our love. Imagine the community around us surprised by our words and our actions. Come, Holy Spirit. Revive us, surprise us, stir us, we pray. Amen. Through believers born.
Let's pray together. Father, Creator God, we thank you for the narrative of Pentecost, the surprise of the Spirit's coming. We're amazed at the sound of the wind and the visible tongues of fire. Amazed too at the Jews hearing the wonders of God, your great deeds in their own languages. We thank you for the gift to the church of the abiding presence of your truth-telling Spirit. Lord Jesus, we thank you for promising and sending the Spirit. Thank you for your forgiveness in our lives, for the forgiveness of our hidden faults. For when we aren't obedient, when we close ourselves off from you or others, keep us from sin, we pray. Holy Spirit, present at creation and through the ages, revive your church today. Move among us, stir us, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, enable us and empower us. Surprise us in our lives and in our church and help us to be unified together, open to your guidance, correction and assistance. Help us to step out and to surprise the world by our unity and love for each other, for others and for the world. And so we pray for our world today, Lord God. We continue to pray for India. We pray for an end to the suffering, for the COVID cases to decrease, for the death toll to shrink. We pray for the many organisations responding to this emergency, reaching out, feeding the hungry, caring for the sick and comforting the grieving. And we particularly pray for the work of Uniting World and Bright Futures, as well as many other organisations reaching out. We continue to pray for climate justice today and for all the victims of climate change. And we pray for governments around the world to work together for a way forward. Lord Jesus, we're thankful for the many volunteers in our nation, our communities and our church, changing communities and changing lives. Holy Spirit, we pray for those in our midst, those we know who are suffering, we're struggling with life at this time for those burnt by the journey of life in physical health or any other circumstance for people without hope. And together we lift the names and faces of people and pray for your hope, your healing, your strength, your guidance and peace. We offer our prayers spoken aloud and spoken in our hearts together in the name of Jesus and through the Spirit who gives us life and where we know freedom. Amen. Bye.
What a joy it is to gather together today for Pentecost. Thank you for joining us. If you would like prayer, I can press the prayer button if you're watching live or send us an email. We'd love to pray with you and for you. We continue to give our offerings financial and practical at this time and we pray that God will use them to surprise the world with God's love. This week, remember the surprise of the Spirit still at work in our lives and in our church today. Invite the Holy Spirit into your daily life. Come Holy Spirit, revive me, surprise me, stir me, I pray, and revive us. Surprise us and stir us, we pray. Step out to surprise the world by our unity and love for each other, for others and for the world. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the cool winds of the hovering spirit soothe and replenish you this day and in the week ahead. Amen. Blessings on your week.